should do. But just for a quick tip on risk calculations, um, the hardest part about it is knowing what number to start with. Uh, okay. And then once you find out what number you start with, you just divide by two every time you go down a generation. And then when you have to calculate the gender. So, so it's straightforward. The uh, hardest part is figuring out what to start with. Okay? And then every time you go down a generation, you divide by two. And if you have to calculate gender, you divide by two. Okay, so for the numbers that you start with, uh, so two thirds, you only start with two thirds when the disease is autosomal obsessive. Uh, when the, when the, what was it? When the person you care about doesn't have disease, but the siblings have disease. So that's the only time you start with two thirds. Okay, and for one, is when the person you care about uh, has the disease and it's autosomal recessive. But everything else will be one half. Okay? So just focus on the special ones, so two thirds of one, then everything else is one half. And then just do the practice problems and you should start getting the hang of this. Okay. Oh, uh, and for the recurrent risk, uh, you only have to do the recurrent risk, or you only have to calculate it uh, when you need. What was it? It's, it's only when you, when you don't know one side of the family. That's the only time you use it. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention that the math will be simple and straightforward. We won't give you anything like three step generations. So, cool. Oh, and for calculating gender, uh, let's see. So, for gender, it's only if it's X linked. And um, if the answer doesn't involve like the sibling's gender, it only says that this person is affected. Uh, that's when you have to divide by half. Because you, because it's excellent, it's only um, males that affect, that get affected. So just keep that in mind. I, I think there's a practice question about it, so just do those practice questions. Okay, and then the other thing that you have to know about is the wind, the wells. Okay, so this is straightforward again. Um, okay. Uh, so we first start by looking at the person that's looking at the people who are affected and looking at the inheritance. So this is the autosomal recessive, this person is affected, so both of these genes are bad. The next thing, the, the next thing you do is look at the parents. So you just match what, what this person had with the parents. And you, you do that to determine what is the bad alleles. So I'm looking at this person uh, that's so one of them are so I just cross reference it with the parents. Uh, this one, I'm looking at the dad. So this is the bad allele for the dad, because it's transferred to the son or the daughter. And the mother, it's this one. It's transferred to that. Okay, and then I look at the siblings. So this is the bad allele. And then this one right here is normal. Okay, just do the practice question and we'll start getting any of this. Okay. Any questions about this lecture? Yeah, this was an autosomal recessive. On uh, quick tip, if it's autosomal dominant, you look at the people who are normal. Uh, so two questions will be for calculating the risks. And then the other two questions will involve reading these wells. Oh, and uh, for, if this was autosomal dominant, you look at the people who are normal first, because you automatically know that because uh, autosomal dominant, these are normal alleles. So yeah. Any questions before I move on? Okay. 
Uh, can I just know that the SMA is closely associated with the wave event? SMA the wave event. Uh, I'm not sure if you have. Do you have? You don't have these pictures, right? We do. So you do have these pictures? Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, okay. So Mikel's reticulum. You need to know that this is a true reticulum. Um, let's see. So, so a fistula means there's a communication with the belly button and then your ilium. The calcium in particular is just an out object. Okay, don't worry about the fistula. So, the calcium in particular is an out object and that it's a true in particular. And then the deep particular is, um, let's think of like a bubble. But it involves all three of the layers of the mucosa. It involves all three of these. Okay, so it involves all three layers of the mucosa. That's why it's a true reticulum. Oh, yeah, you know. uh, yeah, so it involves all these layers. So esophagus, uh, okay. So for at least, okay. So if a person has a short esophagus, uh, just know that he has a high yellow hernia. So his stomach, because his esophagus is so short, the stomach is moving up. Then esophageal stenosis, I mean, yeah, your esophagus got done, they didn't help, I guess. Okay. Uh, so the okay, then for Barrett's esophagus, you have to know the difference between acquired and progenital. And the main difference is that acquired has goblin cells, progenital has no goblin cells. Because remember, the choir was from a metaplasia, and congenital is a failure of movie canalization. Uh, and then for the formation of the stomach, just remember the example she gave in class. So you turn right, so your one vagus nerve is in the front, your right vagus nerve is in the back. So just remember the example in class. Uh, so congenital primordial stenosis, stenosis. So if you see projectile white vomiting, it's this. But if it's projectile green vomiting, it's something else. Okay. So if it's white, it's something. It's this. But if it's green, it's something else. I think Duane Trujillo is what she likes. Okay. Uh, ventral music theory is anything to do with the liver, or soul is everything else. <coughs> uh, and, and, and to determine what's a four gut, and a high gut, it's just what's the blood supply for this structure. Okay, so for this, I'm just gonna see if Okay, from the phallus seal. So it's sealed, from the phallus seal, it's sealed. Sealed by peritoneum. Oh, and this one is your linear intestine scale to return. 
and just know that this one is associated with chromosomal abnormalities. Whereas gastrochysis, uh, it's not sealed, so this is gastrochysis, and just know that this is not associated with chromosomal abnormalities. And this is just a failure in your abdominal wall to propose. And then this one, congenital global hernia, this is a less severe form of gastrochysis. And something about the mini alba. Okay. Oh, a defect in the mini alba can also cause a general global hernia. Okay. So the rotations. So non rotation, just know that it's. Uh, you only rotate the first 90 degrees. It's asymptomatic, and just know what the pictures look like. So, yeah, it was kind of normal. And then for mixed rotation, um, you can't rotate the last 90 degrees, and this is what it looks like. And, like, it looks pretty bad, so, yeah. Okay. Okay, so for the hindgut, what is this picture? Oh, proctoneum, lower third of the pectinate, hindgut, upper two thirds of the pectinate. So perineal body, just know that this is the attachment point for all the pelvic floor muscles. Perineal body, attachment point for the pelvic floor muscles. So this is why in the epistiotomy, instead of going down, you go diagonally to avoid cutting the perineal body. And then if you cut the perineal body, um, she'll, they'll have trouble controlling their bowel movements, so they'll be cool and black. Okay, so, so I've just been on the conium is the first poop that the baby does. And then, in order, in order to have this, you need bile. So, if the baby has problems with their gallbladder, uh, they will not have a meconium. So, the cranial portion. Cranial portion is liver, caudal portion is the I think I got asked about fossil ligament and it attaches the liver to the body wall. So just know that the fossil ligament attaches the liver to the body wall. So for the formation of the pancreas, you have to know this one. So the dorsal bud gives head, body, and tail. Oh yeah, there's a better slide for this. Oh, okay, okay, so the dorsal bud gives head, body, and tail, and the ventral gives the unsnare process. And then just some of these ones, you know what ducts, you know what makes ducts? So the main duct is made by the distal, dorsal, and all ventral. And accessory is just proximal, dorsal. Just know that your neural crest 
forms your endocrine pancreas. Okay, and then for ectopic pancreas, it's just a little bit. The most common site is either the duodenum or stomach. Ectopic pancreas, duodenum or stomach. And then in the pancreas, two heads of the pancreas. Uh, so this is one of the causes of projectile human body. And then the other one is the one with the Okay. Any questions? Okay, you can this. So I had that one, I don't have what you guys have. But did, did she talk about that gynecoid pelvis? Okay. I just saw that gynecoid pelvis is the normal pelvis in the female. Did she talk about the pubic arch? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it makes sense. Um, males have a narrow pubic arch, females have a wider pubic arch, and it's wider so that the men get the birth. Okay, did she talk about 10.5 centimeters? Did she talk about 10.5 centimeters? Yeah. Okay, make sure you know that, because that's like, um, if, if they're below 10.5 centimeters, then they cannot give birth badly. Yeah, they have to do C section. Oh. Actually, it's 11 centimeters. 11 centimeters for the true conjugate. Did you show about true conjugate and diagonal conjugate? No? Okay. But you talked about like 13.5 or. Okay. Oh, I mean, I mean, this is good stuff to know, I guess. So, okay, so the true conjugate, you can't measure it. So, to compensate for that, you need to use the diagonal conjugate. And then for the diagonal conjugate, the normal value has to be. The 12.5 centimeters or greater in order for the female to give a vaginal birth. So if anything is around 12.5 diagonal conjugate. Okay. So I know what makes the public floor, and what makes the public wall. So public floor, public gears, the rear ending, public wall, the formus, ulterior and internus. Uh, oh, and pubo rectalis, um, it's, it's what stops you from pooping. Okay, so know the boundaries of the perineum, I believe it's yeah, so know that anterior borders, lateral borders, and inferior border. And if you don't have my slides, I'll go over them, so if you want to follow along, it's not a bit. Okay, did you talk about the pouches? Pouch, or it was pouch memory, pouch memory. This is something different. So it's it's about the muscles that make the pouch membrane, pouch membrane. It's basically just know what you what layer, what muscle do you find, and well, what can you find in each component. That's just it. Okay, anal triangle, you know, whatever. Uh, did you about the shield and the close up? It's a space, so you have to know it. So just not that. Okay, for this you have to know perineal body is the attachment point for all the pelvic floor muscles. Oh my god. 
this film. Okay, so sacral plexus, sympathetic. Oh, no, it's all right. Yeah, sacral, sympathetic, pelvic spine thing, parasympathetic. Okay. And then the pedagogical nerve, just on three branches, the pedagogical nerve, inferior rectal, perineal, and dorsal nerve of the penis or clitoris. I mean, it's straightforward what they do, right? So I'm just going to skip that. Okay, so above the pain line, it's what is it, somatic, so it's painful. Below the pain line, it's parasympathetic, so it's painless. Not painless, but less painful. Basically, if it's in the peritoneum, it's more painful than below the peritoneum. And just know that the obturator nerve is most likely to be damaged during, uh, what is it, removal of the ovary. Obturator nerve removal of ovary. Uh, and then for this one, uh, it's just going to be identify the vessels in the pelvis. Good luck. Okay, but you have to know the blood supply to the uterus. So there's two blood, two sources of blood. It can either come from the uterine artery, which comes from the internal iliac artery, and oh, is that it? Oh, and yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Hold up, this is weird. Oh, right, I guess that's it. Either off the picture or off um, a pic an image of a cadaver. There's no exception for this, by the way. It's a lot of pleasure. Okay, so superior rectal vein is the last branch of your portal system. Or, yeah. So middle rectal vein, remember that's for painless hemorrhoids. Inferior rectal vein, that's for painful and hemorrhoids. Oh, and then the cheek out about the pads. Oh, we have to go around, but. It's just whatever she wrote down. I see. I mean, you're gonna learn this in lab lecture, so stick with it. This was I had four lectures, so four lecture hours. Okay. But I guarantee you, question about this in your name. So I don't have what's her face to slide, so 
but uh, some mutations, it's kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit different. Some of it's like, yeah, there's a top there. So just, you know, I'm not type that mutation in yet. So if it's a single base, there's you're swapping out a base. Um, and it can either be missense or nonsense or non yeah, missense or nonsense or silence. So missense, you're swapping out, you're changing the amino acid. Nonsense, like you're stop you're changing it to a stop codon, and then silence, nothing happens. Search and insertion is deletions, um, frame shift, where you see that. Okay. Okay, so if it's germline, it's in your gametes and it can be passed down. Or if it's somatic, you're expressing it, uh, and they just know that it cannot be passed out. Okay, so loss of function, you're not making the gene, haploid insufficiency. Um, it's just not as for heterozygotes, less of function. Let's see. Uh, dominant negative is when, uh, what was it? When the products of the mutated gene uh, dominate over the, what is it? Dominate over like the other products. So it's like, let's start this. Just know that it's the products inhibiting normal products. Okay. Gain of function, you're gaining something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you talk about the cheat talk about fitness? Fitness just means can you make offspring? And then if they have like zero fitness, then just assume that in genetic control. Because in genetic people, they cannot pass down offspring. Okay. Okay, so pyrimidine dimers just know that it's caused by sunlight, and the way to repair pyrimidine dimers are through cutting out the dimer and then the skin. Okay, I forgot what they're called, but I'll get to it during that slide. Whatever, 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 Okay. I think it's this slide, yeah, this slide. Basically, if so apyrimic, you will, you do not have the end, or you you're missing the gene, then basic decision you're, you're cutting something out. So they essentially do the same things, but it's just different than what they start with. So apyrimic sites, you're missing like a nucleotide. Basic decision, you're taking out nucleotides and then adding back in the right nucleotide. But just know the order of the things you add. Okay, so endonuclease that takes out the DNA, then protein case. Oh, yeah, straightforward. Okay, so non homologous endoning and homologous endoning. Uh, so, homologous endoning is the best one to do because you're just you're just replicating uh, DNA that's already there. And this can only be done in S phase. Whereas non homologous endoning can be done in any phase, but it's more prone to mutations. So, for example, 
non homologous repair of the thing that I circled, you're going to cut out. You're going to cut, cut out these like sticky ends right there. So that's why you get more from your prone mutation because you're really taking on DNA. Okay, and then Lynch syndrome, this one's mismatch repair. Zero derma pigmentosa, genome wide. This is nucleotide excision repair that's genome wide. Uh, cocaine, fresh and cocaine. Again, these are what they look like. You have these pictures. By the way, you're never going to see this again, so. This is why you have to know them. Well, they're not going to teach you this, but you're expected to know this for your stuff. So, zero derma pigmentosa, genome wide nucleotide excision repair, cocaine friendship, and couple nucleotide excision repair. This is what they look like. So, zero derma pigmentosa, uh, this is caused by sunlight. Remember, sunlight causes the uh, so pyramid, pyramid diamonds and loose mutations, and because you cannot take out the pyramid diamonds, you get. Uh, skin cancer. And cocaine syndrome, they look like this. Something about bird speak. Oh, bird like species. Okay, and then for Atatia, where this is, do you ever see like the weird looking blood vessels or the eye? This is like spider vessels or something. Yeah, spider vessels. They have this, and this is a defect in ATM protein kinase. Yeah, that's it. Oh, wait, was this the, um, what is it, the, what was it, the turning point lecture question? Oh, yeah, oh, I forgot about it. Um, they're going to repeat one of the questions there, and then one of the things will be about, like, either the steps for the DNA repair, and then either this thing, non longest versus longest, and then the zero-dermal pigmentosa, and then syndrome. Cocaine syndrome and ataxia, telecasia. But yeah, so just rewatch that lecture because they're going to repeat the question. Okay. Okay, diagram. Okay, so the median arterial ligament makes the aortic hiatus. Medial arterial ligament that is, from, is made from the psoas major muscle. Lateral arterial ligament quadratus quadratus lumborum muscle. And just remember I eight ten X as well. Question to be about that. And then just know the association. Just know the blood vessels that also run along with the structure. So your IBC runs with your right front nerve. Uh, esophagus runs with your vagus nerve. And the other runs with your thoracic duct and these are the veins. So these arteries here supply your superior diaphragm and then inferior diaphragm supplies your abdominal portion of the diaphragm. Cool. Okay. Just on the branch, now see just on the branches of these things. Okay, just on the branches again. So just remember, ileal hypogastric is most likely to be damaged during uh, appendicitis. Uh, what's it? Appendix removal. All right, you have to know the levels for each of these pairs.
Oh, and I had a question about like the, what nerve comes out of the this muscle. So uh, just know that the gentle the nerve just through the psoas major, and then obturator is emerges from the medial part of the psoas major, the medial border of the psoas major. Again, just know the levels of the arteries. But a fun fact that you'd like to touch you on is for the glenal artery. It's the only artery that's anterior to the aorta. Or, excuse me, it's the only lateral branching artery that goes anterior to your aorta. through your diaphragm, you will cause lung hypoplasia, a uh, unilateral lung hypoplasia, uh, causing a bowel in your stomach contents to move in an area that's missing the lung. Uh, just know that this, the psoas sign is high support of appendicitis. Triple A L three. Triple A L three. Oh, that's it. Okay. Do you have the kidney left here already? Yeah. Okay. So Murphy's punch is for Coastal vertical angle tenderness, and the Murphy sign is for choliocystitis. So make sure you know the order of the vessels coming out of the renal pelvis. I believe in order from anterior to posterior, it's artery vein ureter. Yeah, in the end, artery vein ureter. And that's not the surfaces that are associated with parts of the kidney. Okay, it's vein artery ureter. So it's vein artery your Okay, so super renal glands, cortex comes from mesoderm, medulla comes from neural vessels. And then just know the branches of the arteries. Actually, branches of the arteries that supply parts of the kidney, if that makes sense. And then same thing with the veins, just know what they drain into. Um, just know that the kidney drain into the IBC. Then know that the common levels for uh, Kidney stone obstruction, so your ureteral pelvic junction, pelvic inlet, and your ureteral vesicular junction. So just know that the mina nephros forms the kidney. And just know that uh, the structures that form the kidney are the mina nephroplastima and the ureteric bone. And it's the collecting duct is where they divide 
So what we got is this final video chart plot and the end of the video and the plus two plot. You have to know that the trigon is made of intermediate music band. Okay, so extra feet out of the water, it's a failure of your. It's called a lower, called a lower. Failure of your caudal, failure of your ventral caudal abdominal wall to close. Okay. And this is a more severe form of bladder action. So actually, the bony cut off is the more severe one. But remember, for powder sequence, if you have no kidneys, you can't make any other fluid. And if you can't make any other fluid, you do not give your lungs food to exercise, so they atrophy the size, so they become hypoplastic. So no kidneys, no any other fluid, and no lungs. And for renal transplant, you donate the left. Left kidney. Atopic kidneys are pelvic kidneys. You have to know that the ureters are short, whereas the drop kidney, the ureters are normal size. And for horseshoe kidney, you have to know that. It's a failure of the inferior poles of the kidney, failure of the diffuse, then it stops at L3 because the IMA obstructs its progression of inferior poles of the kidney diffuse, or to diffuse. Actually, no, inferior poles of the kidney just use. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so you're you only get a left side of your you know. I just know that this renal vein entrapment is when your SNA clips on the renal vein. And then your SMA, yeah, so SMA clips left your vein. Uh, so then you can only get a left side of your seal. Yeah, left side of your seal. Uh, because your SMA clips on your left renal vein. Okay. And you don't worry about this one. They start, yeah, they start what you know anyway, right? Okay, just so just go whatever start. Okay, that's it, right? Okay, this time. Yeah, I did that. That was awesome.